Ah! Ah! Hey up everybody. Like a uh, special episode of Sexy Toilet today. Very Your special. Pla- very special. Because due to bad astrological signs and general technical cack handedness, we lost Sunday's recording. Bloody so we're hell. we're doing it again. We're doing it again. We're going to have to do it again. And Epi, those people who didn't hear it the first time, they're not going to mm. hear it again. No, this is what you get for not being twi- subscribed to our Twitch, you know? Yeah, like mountains this. of people coming in, but they don't yeah. want to come in. And they all share in-jokes about last episode, and you won't be able to understand them. We don't even know these in-jokes. That's how in-jokey no. they are. If we know, they're them. just in-jokes between the audience that, that happen on the... On the on the what's that fucking IRC chat program called that everyone uses today? Uh, what? What's an IRC? Internet relay chat. Oh yeah, because I fucking know those words. Yeah, you do. You technical genius. You. You um, technical boy. I might have yeah. <laughs> bright blue circuit board eyes, but I don't know nothing. It's just tattoos, me. I'm, I'm just in a uh, body modification, isn't I? Body modification. Well, mm. I know I've got like 10 gigs of RAM Discord in my Discord was eyes. the word I was looking for. Discord. Discord. Yeah. The only thing I know Discord. about Discord is the, 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 the logo is the ghost. That's it. Ah. I know nothing ah. else. It's more like evidence for our theory that electricity is made out of ghosts, isn't it? Well, that's why I like it. Um, Because the internet's mainly made out of electricity. And through that electricity comes the ghost of books called websites. That does make sense. I'm a scientist. I was going to say, books don't really go around the world scaring people. No. Like like web pages. But internet does. Like Alex Jones comes into your living room, thanks to the internets, and tells you that, like... uh, Tap water is making frogs into in, into Hillary Clinton. It, yeah, modern day ghosts. That's what the internet yeah. is. Yeah, nothing. Everyone, more. everyone who's ever appeared on the internet, it's dead. We're dead. If you can hear this, we're dead. Yeah, well, where we died like four or five years ago in a train accident. I was going to say like if we heard this ourselves, like in the past, yeah, we'd explode. We would like you can't it's impossible. Dead self. No, that's it. it. It causes a time paradox. If, I'd still blame you for us dying. By the way, why were you shooting a train driver with your air rifle? I was bored. I hadn't done out for we haven't done anything all week. We had. But, we, we'd, uh, we'd crashed that ship. We spent uh, <laughs> two days wandering around the park with the fucking. Pillowcase full of cider. <laughs> we should have had that. We should have kept it in cans, really, shouldn't we? Like uh, just the pillowcase. It kind of leaked. We we had to hold it above our heads and just like let the let the cider drip into our mouths. Yeah, well, once you've done that for two days, shooting a train driver with a pellet gun sounds a bit more appealing. Yeah, but then he veered off the train into a school because trains have steering wheels, and I've never necessar- necess- never necessarily understood why because. Well, why do you think they, they have a driver? Like a tra- the why driver do they have a driver? Decide where the train goes. Does it? Does, does it yeah, he fucking he does. Has... That's why they always oh. have the most. They have the most stern people being train drivers because they're like, "Listen, mate, here's the steering wheel. Don't fucking touch it. Don't touch don't... it. The tracks decide where the train goes, mate. Don't you <laughs> like, touch it. Tracks this are is in just charge. For show. This is just for show. You're subordinate to two pieces of cast iron, mate. And then like, you get. And then you get yeah. some. Hot shot with glasses and no trousers on, sliding yeah, across come, the floor. He's come, <laughs> he's come out of train driving college thinking he knows everything. Keeps winking and clicking at the same time. Yeah. We have to shoot him with our air rifle. Yeah, because what's he going to do? He was going to get down them tracks and he was going to turn into that school. He's, he he's He's got... Unfortunately... He's yeah. not a very happy man. No. All Many them ways. sunglasses and sliding across the floor. Yeah. That's more of a coping mechanism. Yep. Yeah. It's like that uh, German wings pilot who uh, who was a part time like amateur clown. Then he, then he then he flew his plane into a into a building a building that was made out of mountains. 
like a building where rocks lived a mountain oh what's that got to do with him yeah. being a clown I don't fucking know man. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to join in the conversation and feel feel involved here was the mountain a cream pie hmm are mountains cream pies they have I mean, got wh- they are white question. on top they are white on top and they do look very tasty don't they like and clowns look- avoid them yeah like you never see a clown get a mountain full on in the face do you, you have you, you ever been on a mountain with a clown on it no i've never seen a clown at higher than sea level exactly it's probably because they, they belong in the sea well you go to the dead sea in israel lowest point below sea level on dry land in on earth full of fucking clowns absolutely riddled with them floating around big shoes mm-hmm. bish bash bosh. i mean that could be a, a false equivalence because you know most clowns are Jewish. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> most clowns are Jewish, man. No, they're not. Where, do, where, where, where are you basing this on? Like that time we met that, that, that those Jewish clowns. <laughs> I've met not a single Jewish clown. I've met Eastern yeah. European clowns. I've met uh? an English clown. Where, where's Israel? Eastern Europe, that's it. That's because most clowns are Jewish. I suppose that makes sense. Exactly. Right. Well, right, let, let's, right. Let, let's start the podcast that we're let's doing then, shall we? Let's start the fucking podcast. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Let, let's, do, let's do the comedy podcast now. We've got <laughs> <enough fun. laughs> just, just got in there early. Yeah. Just got in there early. Right. Well, one thing we covered, and I think that the audience deserves to know more about, is uh, your love of the movie My Fair Lady. Oh, God, I do love it. Oh, I love it. Mm. I don't know if it's the condescension. I don't know if it's the con- yeah. I don't know if it's the costumes. I don't know if it's just... Uh... God, what's his name? You... Uh, Richard Harris? Not Richard Harris. He's boring. Robert Harris? <laughs> Harrison the bloke. Ford. Harrison Ford, yeah. Harrison Ford from that film. Rex Harrison, yes. Rex Harrison, Rex Harrison. Ford. Rex Harrison Ford. Yeah. Because he's Rex Harrison. Because he got the job despite being unable to sing. Yeah. Why can't well, a woman be... be more like a, a steam train? <laughs> Why can't a woman be more like the gold standard? Why can't why, why can't yeah. they, why can't they use new money? <laughs> why can't women have penises? <laughs> <laughs> well, they can nowadays. If well, they they can, yeah. You can have a nice feminine one. A nice feminine penis. Mm-hmm. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Nope. Nice. Like but, it. Butch manly cunt. Oh yeah, a butch cunt. Like what Book Angel has. I don't like it. I don't like Book Angel, he's a bit of a cunt. Yeah, he, well he's a, he's actually uh, got a pretty bad uh, rep in uh, transgender circles, because he's a uh, true scum. The fuck is that? I believe it's someone who believes that you have to be diagnosed by a doctor to be uh, as gender dysphoric to actually have a different gender identity as opposed to, you know, uh, being gender fluid or anything like that. It's a bit fucking rich coming from a man who's yeah, made his months. made his living getting yeah. slammed. Pretty much, yeah. But it's you know, for a lot of uh, trans people, it's the sex industry or nothing, isn't it? Because they don't get employed in the, in in the whale factories or, or the bin men industry. I don't know. They, they're a bit more open nowadays. Anyone could be a bin man, even a bin woman. Hmm. Or even, if you, even if you don't have, uh, or, or bin dogs. I mean, you see yeah, them on the that, internet. You go, they, have them. they go, put yeah. something in a bin, and it goes in a bin. Yeah. Bin dog, bin it for but you. They have them in the, they have them in the pool, don't they? You, you, there, there's a team of dogs, like no humans involved. It, it appears the dogs just developed this as this kind of evolutionary thing, or it's a team of dogs, and they pull around one of them little trailers, and people just put their rubbish on it, and the dogs just take it to the dump. And they occasionally take out things that I can use, like wires or, 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 or you know, an air pistol. That, sound, that sounds pretty good. It's... 
and the dogs are slowly developing. Yeah, the dogs are slowly developing a technological civilization. We'll have to send them some money. Mm. You see a little dog with a spanner in its mouth trying to build a ship. I mean, Why are a we... silly dog. We need the this, silly dogs, we... of course. Nepal's landlocked and doesn't have really any major navigable rivers. So. How come there's no large investment for animal development? Like, mm. I mean, they've got they've got gorillas like trying to type and shit. Yeah. But why haven't they got like say a bear trying to do flagging? Mm. Or Point, man. a lion that's really good at repointing your walls. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, instead of having like uh, a bunch of humans do web design. You could give that job to like six million crickets, like a swarm of locusts doing web design. I've got a spider do it. You probably look better. No, but it, like a spider would start the job, but then they'd quickly they'd quickly quit because all they'd get all yeah, but, day. Yeah, but Adam, all Adam, day, Adam, every Adam, day Adam, is Adam, 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 web Adam, <laughs> Adam, Adam. What? They'd be a web designer. All they'd designer. get all day. Adam. <laughs> They'd be a web designer. <laughs> They'd be a fucking web designer. All day, man. They'd get web design comments, wouldn't they? They'd get jokes because they're a spider who makes web pages. Yes. And that that would be unoriginal. That'd be the kind of thing that I wouldn't want featured on a comedy podcast, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway. But what if we what if we go into more depth? We can't because obviously, like web design is a lot more can lot more. There's a lot more to it than just buying a spider and shoving it in the computer. It's true. Like, all you'll get then is a computer full with, filled with desiccated flies who've had their guts sucked out. And like, no, uh, that does fuck all for your heating or cooling. Oh, man. Like, if you've got an overclocked computer, yeah, and, you know, you're overclocking your processor, and even one, even one desiccated fly gets in, that's your performance fucked, man. Your frame rate goes through the floor, your mum cries... Your dad's upset. The dog died. Yep. Your baby sister turns out that she's like uh, adopted. Your 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 brother-in-law is mm. literally trying to pull out his shin bone. Mm. And your granddad drives a car into a big wall. And it's all your fucking fault because you had to overclock your computer nobody needs to overclock their over no no nobody you weren't happy with the processing power that you bought on, off the shelf and you <laughs> thought you were cleverer than amd and this is all your fault or intel oh, <laughs> i've bought something it doesn't work fast enough better fucking break it like when i tried to overclock my microwave that time with uranium exactly I mean, you don't yeah. overclock anything else. I mean, you yeah. don't overclock your shoes to walk faster. I, I sometimes do. Turns out, yeah. You get, you know, those uh, springs from ballpoint pens, the tiny ones. Yeah. And you just get, uh, 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 it has to be a, a ballpoint hammer. You know, the, the, the ones with the, because otherwise it doesn't work. A peening hammer, that's the one. A peening hammer. Yeah. A penis yeah. hammer. Oh, go on. <laughs> You just uh, you just start hammering them into the soles of your shoes, yeah? You can walk, like, at 400, 500 miles an hour if you've got about 50 of uh, the springs from ballpoint pens. Ah, oh, I get what you mean. I don't know, they'd be a bit wiggly. They are, and it's it's a tricky thing to manage in many ways because at the speed you're walking I, I, I've you got a better, I've got a, breathe. I've got a better idea What's to that? improve the shoes. Yeah? Have you ever heard of the Orion Project? Orion project, but okay. let's explain it to all listeners. So everyone at home, the Orion project yeah. was a project in the 1950s carried out by the US military and NASA for a mm -hmm. nuclear propulsion system. What would exactly. happen is you would have a solid iron plate, whatever mm -hmm. would, whoever, your, your, your man would be on top, and mm -hmm. he would drop a little nuclear bomb that would go off underneath the Orion plate, yes. propelling the solid steel structure up into the into the sky they, they figured into they the could space. get to speeds of like one tenth the speed of light that way with an, with enough nuclear bombs and a mad enough bloke now mm -hmm. on that same principle mm -hmm. could we put shoes. that into shoes yeah. <laughs> yeah how can how can we make 
this like uh, this particular Cold War technology apply to the world of footwear? That's the question that they ask in Puma today. How do we apply obsolete and recently declassified propulsion yeah. systems to our footwear? Because we can bet that those bastards at Adidas are trying it. And then they... if we don't want them to beat us to the market. They're going, they're going the other fucking way, aren't they? They've just used solar panels. Oh, that's going to get you any quicker. What about at night? Green shoes. Who wants what about the night? Aye. What if you're a night runner? What if you're a burglar? If you're really fat and your shadow covers your shoes the whole time. What if... There are men, there are men in this world who, whose feet haven't seen the sun in, in 50, 60 years. Yeah, how can they run it on real speeds? It's unfair. Same of them, they'll be just like... Oh, you know, that South African murderer with no legs. What? Well, wow, but now we've all forgot about him. Well, I forgot about Oscar him. I don't Pistorius. Even what? Oscar, Oscar, Oscar pastoralized milk. Oh, the robot man. Yeah. He was trying to yeah. defend himself by shooting his wife eight times through a door. Exactly. He thought his wife might have turned into a ghost or a zombie while she was on the toilet. Oh, Christ. That's, who, that's why I don't keep a gun in the house. Exactly. That's why I bury my gun in the yard and and dig it up when, when I feel threatened. This is why you've always got dirt on you. Exactly. What you got to do is wipe it off once, a, Adam. Just wipe it off once and it'll be fine. The real problem is I should buy a shovel because I'm digging it up like a dog would. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, excited and drooling excited <laughs> and drooling scratching with my hands <laughs> like uh, digging up a gun uh, that's my that's my ideal Friday night really isn't it I don't think I've ever dug up a gun dug up a gun I found you a gun but I've never dug up a gun uh, well, did, when you found it was it in snow or sand because that might count not proper digging but as long as it's um... semi solid it was kind of in a bush and rusted to shit. Ah, uh, uh, well, that's, that's useless then. Get some WD-40 on it, maybe. Load it with smaller bullets than it's than it's made for. I don't Might think it's going to work. Yeah. But anyway, that's my found gun. Yeah. Now we started talking about my fair lady and your love for it. Oh yes, I like it. It's got the yeah. characters, the words, the costumes. The intermission, everything. But did you know, did you know that it was based on a stage play by George Bernard Shaw? No. No, he didn't know that, even though we covered it on the last on the last podcast. Because Absolutely. he's a forgetful man. An idiot in many ways. <laughs> yeah. For like, all intents and uh, purposes, I didn't know. No. Like, for, we're using stage ignorance here. You know, like the, the, the concept they use in plays. But anyway, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a stage play by George, George Bernard Shaw called Pig Million. Pig Million. Sounds Pig familiar. Million, yeah. yeah, it's a Greek word. It means the, the, the desire to have or collect one million pigs. That makes That's sense. Because the, the, the film adaptation took liberties with the story. I was going to say, like, I, don't, yeah. I, don't really, I don't remember a mention of pigs once in all of no. My Fair Lady. In fact, it's called Lady, not Pigs. No, no. But in, in, the, in the George Bernard Shaw original, based on a, a, uh, a Greek myth called Pygmalion, about a man who, uh, who wanted to collect a million pigs, that's what it's about. Wasn't he played by T Rex Harrison? He was played by uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex Harrison, yes. Yes, I thought so. <clears throat> like, uh, like he was in the original stage play, and uh, often during the production he'd uh, dispute with the directors and scriptwriters of the of the film My Fair Lady, saying, when's my character going to say the famous lines from the play? I finally collected one million pigs. What fool would dare oppose me now? <laughs> <laughs> So, so how did, pig milk for a thousand years. So how did how did the the this pig million yes. play itself play itself out when in front of the prince? How did they convince the prince mm -hmm. that the million pigs was a lady? 
Ah, the, the point wasn't to convince the prince uh, a million pigs was a lady. Oh. The original story, like uh, the, the the prince is the the pig inspector, the man who comes and counts how many pigs you've got. Oh. And that was the point of the whole process of getting one. Instead of teaching a cockney gutter, gutter snipe to talk proper and be ladylike and not piss down grids, and eat chocolate. It was in fact, uh, it was in fact a man desperately trying to collect one million pigs to uh, to and then the final test was the pig inspector coming and counting all of his pigs and to be honest the, the, that part of the stage play the pacing is very poor especially for a George Bernard Shaw play he's generally agreed to be a great playwright but having to wait there literally I, I think the scene lasts for about 48 hours my man just counts pigs it's like one I was pig say, yeah. I was going to say like you know, think you do it in teams pigs. no just one man one well you know like Asian a Greece, it? Yeah. <laughs> Asian Greece, they didn't have the manpower for pig counting then Jesus Christ they'd let anything like, on stage not like the modern day where, where you just drop pigs from a helicopter and they're counted through a uh one of those machines that measures the speed of bullets. Uh, yeah, it just sees a break in the light. A pig mm. break in the light. Yeah. Mm. What about Freddy then? Like Freddy, mm. Fre Freddy was like, he was on the streets you lived on. Yeah. He was on there. He's, he's He repeated it a few times as well. See, that was a pig that the, uh, the Rex Harrison character didn't get to own and uh, his regret for not being owned by a man with one million pigs in a warehouse was, was established a kind of pathos to the, to the stage play okay then mm. so we've got we've got Greg's Harrison mm -hmm. and then you've got Major Pickering who's what, what's Major Pickering in all this is he also a pig like well, to be honest, the stage show is one man, one pig inspector, and one million pigs. So any incidental character from the film would have been, in the stage show, a pig. And of course, the pigs aren't in any way anthropomorphic in the stage show. That they're, they're simply pigs. Does that... In oh, God. What, what about Eliza Doolittle's father? Oh, that's one slightly different thing about the stage show. You see, he represents a kind of untamable evolutionary ancestor to the pig like a, a kind of wild boar man and uh, there's a long scene of the Rex Harrison character trying to wrestle with this this untamed pig in order to own it in order to because I think at the stage of the play he's got about 600 700,000 pigs but every pig counts and he's prepared to do anything to get another pig for his one million pig ambition and uh that, yeah, it, so there's a long state, uh, scene in the stage play where the man is wrestling with this kind of ancestral um, meta pig until, like, so, you know, it's a wild boar at first, and, like, uh, as he wrestles a bit harder, it becomes pinker and fatter and more pig like, until eventually he owns it as a pig. <sighs> oh, well, this. I mean, I didn't know more than anything about this, really. But this is what you get with Hollywood. They remake something. They just completely, fu they completely fucking ruin it. I mean, I, I love My Fair Lady, but... Mm. I mean, it, it's a, it stands alone as an artistic uh, project for itself. But it's like the Starship Troopers movie, you know? Like, that wasn't originally called Starship Troopers. That was originally meant to be an adaptation of Jane Eyre. Well, that makes more sense. No? Giant insects firing, firing life into yeah. into the cosmos. Like one plain girl played by the girl who played Dizzy, whose name I can't remember. And then there's there's Carmen, who in Jane Eyre, you know Carmen, who's played by um, not Julia Roberts, the other one. I don't Tits know any. McGee, you know. They're all they're, yeah. they're all plain faced women in that film, and men. She's the one who uh, who went out with. Um, Charlie Sheen, and then tried to sue him because she might have got AIDS. The straight-faced one? Yeah. The one who's supposed to be the pilot? Yeah. yeah. I like, think everyone understands who we're talking about. Like, she's yeah, completely she's, forgettable. She's mad woman in the attic in Jane Eyre. Mad woman in the attic. They're mm -hmm. supposed to be making a film about the mad woman from the attic. I don't know how you're going to make a whole film about an attic. 
Well, they made that film The Attic, didn't they? Yeah, but that wasn't set in an attic the entire time. Well, I'm disappointed now. I've never seen it, but I thought it would be attic-based fun. Well, yeah, what I does thought... you think? I am a fan of attics. I love going through. I mm. love going through attics. I love going mm-hmm. through boxes of taps and figurines and vinyl. And you bought cars from when you were a child. Um, duvets you'll uncle, never use again. Your uncle's old camouflage jackets. A belt. Deadly electric blankets. Pen lids, full of them. Mm-hmm. A whole box full of pen lids. And i tell you what my favourite thing about going through an attic is. The most hilarious attic-based joke of them all. So when he's standing on, on the rafters bit in the attic, then he accidentally trip and fall a little. And your foot goes through the ceiling, and everyone below can see your foot. That's a joke. That's that, I think that's the most hilarious thing that ever happened to me. See, I'm not scum, and I had my uh, loft converted. Oh. Fucking rafters. I think we are. Well, you had, you, you had all them uh, all, all them uh, Irish traveller labourers come up to your loft and tarmac it, didn't you? I did put a bulge in the bedroom, but it was mm. worth it. Yeah, yeah. definitely like, worth you, you it. Get, you went down in your in your uh, in your four by four, in your Range Rover Sport, picked up a bunch of Irish traveller labourers because you were richer than me when you were young, driving around in a Range Rover Sport. And, do, you uh, now, and... do you know how long it took them to get that fucking tarmac up there? A bucket of time, three ton of tarmac to tarmac, know, man. The, tarmac the attic. So to come in, flight of stairs, up the ladder, then they could dump it. The steamroller, fucking hell. You had them all passing out from the tarmac fumes and you just chuck them out the window until they recovered. Well, they were cheap. We just threw them out the window and got some new ones. Yeah. I mean, like, it wasn't generally enough to kill them. They'd usually be, like, quite moderately severely injured. Well, we Not did. So, have, like, well, this is the thing. We had a skip. We put them in the yeah. skip, and then we put all the shit on top of them. Council mm. never knew they were there. You could put anything exactly. in there. We did that with the <laughs> garden waste as well. Yeah. Because usually they stop you if you're using garden waste. I know, man. Like, uh, putting the waste in the correct waste receptacle is, like, the primary role of local government. In England. In, in any country. I hear that the Germans have have uh, some old uh, Luftwaffe fighters that they mm-hmm. use to enforce um, to enforce recycling rules. Do they just swoop down and fire upon anybody on the street who drops a can? Yeah, just walking along, and all of a sudden it's like north by northwest, and uh, you know a biplane comes down and machine guns you. And I think that's a good environmental policy, personally. I think that like uh, it's, people it's... pay more attention to keeping their town beautiful and uh, making sure that things are recycled properly when they're threatened by biplane-based attack. It's cheaper on marketing, if you think about it. I mean, mm-hmm. one plane is a lot easier than employing five people. Exactly. I mean, they pay, what, 250,000 quid for a, a big advertising program across the whole country in the UK. It's efficient when you can pay 50 grand for a biplane, maybe 25 grand a year for the pilot, though. You know, you'll find some people will do it for free just out of the goodness of their hearts. Cause don't even, you don't even need a gun. At that sort of speed, you could just throw a handful of gravel. You'll have the same oh, effect. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Same effect. A lawn dart. You know, oh, some, uh, <laughs> big some old ball old. bearings. Yeah. Maybe the ball bearings and drop them. Yeah. Make sure they come from at least, what, 2,000 feet? Yeah, I think that'd be enough to enter each terminal velocity. Yeah. As long as they're enough to crack or break the schools of, of offenders against uh, against proper waste um, waste management policy, they don't deserve life. They don't deserve a good life. They deserve to live what's left of their life in critical pain. Mm. So what That's are you up to this week then? Um, well, one trying to find out what yeah. the fuck I've got this fucking MD in. Oh, shit, I don't yeah. even know if it's human, to be honest. Mm. I mean, I, I know some stuff, but I, I phone up the university and they they just they just like, oh, I'll just wait there. 
Just wait there. Just mm-hmm. wait there. We'll just, mm-hmm. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. And then they fucking hang up. Yeah. One of them, they put there. They said, yeah, we're, we're looking now. They put me on hold. Mm-hmm. I was on hold for 16 hours. 16 hours? 16 hours. I've not been on hold for and then 16 it just hours. Went, and then ever it, since I called directory And then it just inquiries. dropped. It just dropped. Yeah, they just dropped the call. I was, like, well, I was a sweating and, mess. Like, uh, let's try and reason this out, right? Let's try and think of what MD could stand for. I mean, I know it's like, not medical doctor. No. Like multiple I've been, doctor? I've been, are, are you I've, a multiple? Are there? Are there? Is there more than one of you? Are you a multiple doctor? Oh God! How do you? How would you know? Is it motherfucking dick? It's always it stands for. No, my dick doesn't fuck mothers. Uh, well, not once. No, I mean, not, I don't mean like your own mother. I'm not meaning sick, but mother, like dick. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying like. You have I fucked? A, have I fucked though. a mother? Yeah. Are you a motherfucker? Yes, I fucked a mother. Well, then, but it's then, not a regular thing, is it? It's not like uh, well, walking down enough. a street it's, it's grade. Not, it's I, not need, I need. I need to. An, I need it's to not slip. something that you'd have an academic qualification in, is it? I need to slip into a woman that's given birth previously. No, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's on my questionnaire. Well, good for you. I don't need those consent sheets. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was those laws I broke. That that's why I have to I have to get. Well, like it it makes things pretty unromantic because I got to make them fill the questionnaire. I gotta to get to a notary or have it signed in front of a justice of the peace, and then finally we can we can go out to dinner, and she can tell me no. Well, this is what I do. Guess what I do? Mm-hmm. I yeah have a consent receipt. Ah, that's a clever idea. Instead of waiting for them, I just mm-hmm. go here. You go receipt. Don't like it. Come back later on. Mm-hmm. Put your card in the machine. Put your pin code in. Do you, would you like a receipt? If not, I'll keep it. But you know, it's for your like, record. Uh, yeah, there's, there's there's a fifty euro cent surcharge. I'm sorry about that, but the ink isn't free. No. And it's it's, uh, it's five cent for a bag as well. Well, yeah, but uh, you know, that's to keep those fucking biplanes away. Well, no, it's more for leftovers. Oh yeah, good point. When you when so you ba- when you're banging me, there's gonna be a dinner involved. <laughs> I, I just thought you meant you went leftovers from the sex. Just, you know, you can take a bone for your dog. No, that's disgusting, Adam. How could you? Take <laughs> those things? That's ridiculous. Leftover yeah. sex. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Bits well, that fall. ever happens. Sometimes there's residue. <laughs> you know. We Sometimes. have leftover. It's leftover food. Good point. How can you fuck without a chicken to hand? A rotisserie chicken. Well, I mean, you get I've out. Done it with... you, you get out. Of, you need energy. Quick energy. Well, I've done it just by wrapping myself in processed chicken slices, and, and I, thought, I found that worked. That does see that way works because you're soaking in the protein through your skin. Yeah. I did it. They're like what, like nicotine patches. I just put a patch of chicken on my arm and yeah. soak in the chicken energy. Chicken patches works. Yeah. I've seen it before. Ham slices, put th- put underneath, put underneath yeah. the gums. Mm. Let them slowly dissolve. You'll get the protein you need. Often I, uh, often I, I just uh, I snort a bit of the old uh, prawn sandwich paste. Just for a bit of a, a bit of an extra boost, you know. I was going to say, like, I, I, I've got no idea how vegans fuck. You know what I mean? That's why vegans can't reproduce. That's why they have such a powerful propaganda arm because they can't they, reproduce naturally. And they can't slip. They can't slip what they need at the time, like because mm-hmm. most people need that meaty, meaty pick me up when they're on yeah, the half, job. Yeah, halfway through, like. Any kind of, well, just halfway through the foreplay, of any kind of like sexual interaction you'll have with a vegan, you'll find they're often just passing out from 
from protein loss. Try like pouring some spinach or beans into their mouth, but it's it's a slow process. Because like, how the hell can you start get knocking on soybeans? It's true, man. All like whenever I'm on loaded and gassy. I always have like one chicken leg either end, mm. just in case. <laughs> well, you know, that's the famous scene from films that, like, you see the man and woman in bed, and that things are getting hot and heavy, and uh, and like the woman bites the man's lower lip, and she turns around in bed, and then uh, the other side, the man's got a chicken leg, and she starts biting that. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> see, that's sexy. That's sexy. That- that's have, you classy, ever seen, sexy. have you ever seen that film uh, Nine and a Half Weeks? Yeah. That's basically just two people fucking a fridge. It is. Just two people just throwing out like uh... You've got Mickey Rooney and some other mm-hmm. woman. I think it's I'm just gonna say it's to me more. Probably I think it's Anthea Turner, but yeah. I'm gonna say it's to me more or Anthea no more. An- Anthea Turner, god damn. He's trying to ruin this here for me. <laughs> He's trying to ruin my trousers. Yeah, I remember a scene in the film that you know, Mickey Rooney comes round to uh, to Demi Moore's house, yeah, and she says to him, uh, "Me fridge is gone. The 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 fuse is gone on me fridge plug, and the shops are closed now. I can't buy a new fridge, so everything in this fridge needs to get eaten up quick, otherwise it'll go off." But they weren't hungry. Ah, uh, no. makes a bit more sense now. But the thing is, yeah. like, the light's on. Mm. Fucking tricks. Yeah. Tricks. It's it's, it's a, a huge continuity error. If you go on IMDb, you'll you'll see literal pages and pages, I think about 47 pages of people pointing out that continuity error and saying it just took broke my uh, suspension of disbelief in the film. I can't believe people... She says the fridge is broke. She says... We've got to have these ice cubes and eggs, like right away. Otherwise, this, they'll, they'll go off. This whipped cream. And I'll, I'll have waste, and I'll, I'll have wasted the whole gyro. I've what? wasted the whole JSA payment. Fucking cherries, whipped cream, and ice go off the quickest. Yeah, they do. Ice goes off incredibly quickly. Like I bought myself uh, an, an ice angel from the supermarket the other day for for, uh, for me tea. Hmm. I was having. Uh, Boiled potatoes and uh, and spuds for main course. Now after I was having uh, ice with some uh, sweetener on it, an ice angel. You've had one, haven't you? A taste ice angel. Fuck but, yeah. You know, I got it home and it had gone off. Child, child, it had gone off. It was all <laughs> it was all smelly water. Smell. Oh, yeah. god. Smelly, smelly water. Disgusting. What did you keep near it? Um. Well, I kept me tea for the next night, which was uh, which was a dehumidifier. That's 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 probably good. You've been you are overly hum- humid. It, it, um, well, it's it's my problem. I went to the doctors when they said to me, "I'm internally humid." Like uh, he had to listen to my chest with his uh, stethoscope, and he said, "Jesus, it's like Kew Gardens in there. It's like a botanical gardens." Did they you ever know, did they ever sort out that? Not cumulus. No, like uh, I've just got to, I've just got to take medication to deal with it now. That now that you know, I'm basically expelling clouds from the innards. I, I couldn't. I couldn't, and, I couldn't imagine doing that myself. To be honest. End of man gas. <laughs> <laughs> man gas. Remember when gas used to just be called naughty air? Naughty air. <laughs> naughty air. Spicy, spicy air. Yeah, spicy air and naughty air. Naughty and, air. Uh, and hot no. Yep. Yeah. Night time was just dark day. Remember. And, and wet slap. Mm. Which was water at the time. Yeah. Because you could slap it and it was wet. Yeah. Makes sense. Made a satisfying slapping noise. Like nothing's more satisfying to slap than, than water. I often, what I like to do is when I'm with a lady, is just tie two water balloons to her ass and just give them a nice slap. Mm. 
Sounds good. I think. Should, I think... Try it yourself. It, it, adds, it adds a little bit of levity to the. To, In to... fact, I'm let's gonna... say you've got to tell her that her father's got Alzheimer's and you can't cope anymore. Just adds a little bit of levity to the situation there. I think we should just pause here mm. and ask the audience to join yeah. us in a slap. Yeah. Are you ready? Three, okay. two, one. Ooh, some good slapping there. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's fucking hurt. <laughs> I'm slapping a ham. What are you slapping? A fucking dead dog. <laughs> It's got, it's gone odd. Mm. Oh, nah, I've had enough. Of t- in the dog there. Yeah. My hands are uh, no. My hands are yeah. no. No, the other day, yeah, I had me, uh, I had me guitar, yeah. yeah. I was, I was just playing one of my guitar tunes for the people at work. Was it crying? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I'm crying because I'm sad by Eddie Vedder. Ah, okay. Bill Jam. It was a cover. And then when I ended it. They just started slapping their hands, just slapping themselves in the hands. It was really confusing. That's crazy. It really put me off, man. It was. And scary. this was at the end. At the, at the end, I said, well, "Hey guys, what did you think of that?" And they just started slapping themselves in the in the palm of their hands. Didn't they say anything? No. Well, some of them said "woo" like they were ghosts. The I ran f- away. What the? I, I'm, not, I'm not going back there. Who, who's this? Who's this with? It was, it was the people from my work, so they're mostly people from, you know, Central, Western and Eastern Europe. This is probably why. Yeah. We're staring at people and flapping your arms at them randomly is acceptable. <laughs> Back home, <laughs> yeah. if somebody asks you, was that any good, you'll avoid saying anything good about it. Yeah, you say. You fuck go. off and you throw your pint glass that was uh, fucking do. wank mate give up yeah I've had that hundreds of times yeah sometimes like what you what you have to do if you show real appreciation of someone is get in a van and then drive past in your van and throw like your half eaten fish and chips out of the van window and uh, hit them in the back of the head and say get a haircut you wanker that, that's happened to me that's it wasn't a fish and chips, than... it, was, it was cartons of milk, but... All right, well, you know, any kind of half-finished food product that you, that you have to have in your, in your transit. I had a feeling they hadn't finished, they hadn't even started. Mm. I think it was, they were being specific. You think that they'd gone out specifically to uh, to buy, like, a, a small carton, uh, maybe a half... Oh, no, litre, it, was, it was one litre. Milliliter. One, one litre. Oh, a foot. One, one a litre foot. carton. A Tetra Pak, or was it one of them plastic? Yeah, Tetra Pak, uh, they're like a box. Yeah, yeah. Like a Capri Sun of milk. Oh, that, that's a really good product idea, actually. I want, I want, that I want sounds gross. Capri, a Capri Sun of milk now. A Capri Sun of Capri Sun's bad enough. A Capri Sun of warm, evaporated milk. So it's I don't nice know, and thick. Like, Capri Suns are dead expensive, right? Yeah. But I always mm-hmm. feel cheated if I have them. Yeah, because you, you, you give it a nice suck and it's gone. Well, no, it's not so, not so much you give it a suck and it's gone because that applies to mm. a lot of things. But it's true, certainly me. But anyway. It's a bag. <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking bag. Uh, yeah. I don't want a drink in a bag. You, you think that uh, drinking out of a, a what if it was a skin of some kind? Well, no. You think about it. What other what other drinks come in a bag? Like. Um... In uh, uh, old timey times, that they, they drank out of, like, uh, you know, those. You see them, like it's like a leather bag of drink. Oh uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, but we don't live in like the Middle Ages, Adam. I don't. Well, go I mean, in, it was. I don't it was. It was more. Re- it was more recent than you imagined. Before plastic, where every every plastic thing was just made out of leather. You remember that? I remember that. Yeah, I'm not old. Yeah. I'm not that. I'm not. I'm not that. Well, for everyone at home, you... I'm not old, yeah. but I'm not young. No, no. But I can remember when we used leather. I was born sometime between 1992 and any other time. Forwards and backwards. Yeah, upwards, in fact. 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, so, you remember, like, uh, digging around in the Cocoa Pops thing. Find the nice little leather toy that they'd, they'd put in there. You'd be leather, leather pen toppers. Yeah. Leather pen toppers. Um, mm. I had a leather He-Man. Mm. And some leather Ninja Turtles as well. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you'd go into the supermarket before plastic was widespread, which happened in about 1998, I think. But, yeah. And 1998 was the year of plastic, I remember, because it was it was the time, person of the year, was just plastic. But anyway. And the, it was the first time they could make wraparound glasses. Oh, yeah. Like... Uh, Bef- before then, people just wore glasses to not look like a cunt. But Bono from U2, he said, like, I'm wearing these glasses, but I don't think I look like enough of a right cunt. And what I want to do is invest billions of my fortune that you've given me you savulating dogs into making uh, uh, glasses that'll make me more like a massive cunt and they had to come up with an entirely new material because of course back then the frames of glasses were made of leather and funnily enough the strange thing that got it it was actually someone was someone had come in the office and Bono was a, a dick always and he pissed somebody off and he threw like a really darkened banana at his face, and it wrapped ah, around his see. fucking face. Yeah, and that was the inspiration. And the edge just pointed at him and said, "That's the fucking one. That's the fucking one. Those. Are, that's the design." Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you'll have to excuse me for a second. The headphones fallen out. You fucking. <laughs> and I didn't hear what you just said. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Anyway, so the Edge has helped Bono create the the wraparound glasses. He did with uh, with a very darkened uh, banana. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, do you remember? Uh, well, yeah. As I was saying, though, like uh, you go into the supermarket and they just give you a leather bag, a disposable leather bag. I always felt bad about that. I try to keep know, them man. as long as I could. Mm. I mean, leather, le- leather. You end up with fucking fish are eating it. Yeah. You find fucking I... leather in the stomach. Well, I remember going to the chip shop, getting uh, cod and chips, and you'd you'd open up your cod, and you'd have to be picked little bits of leather out with tweezers of your, of your cod's flesh. You know, it was like eating a fishy belt sometimes. <laughs> I like that. Does that sound like a, a fishy sounds belt? Like a, sounds like a euphemism, doesn't it? It really Let's does. Let us fucking chew on your fishy belt. Go me a love. Let me gather go on your fishy belt. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Mm. It just, it's like a. Again, it sounds like it sounds like one of those mm. words that are bad, but are but isn't bad. So like fishy belt. What was the other one? Mm. Smelly wallet. Smelly wallet. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That... You fucking smelly wallet. <laughs> uh, you you you. Egg shoes. Nah, that that, uh, that doesn't I'm work. Sure even... nah, no, it doesn't nah. work, does it? No, nah, it's got to have that smell in it. So fishy belt, smelly belt, wallet. Smelly. Uh. Moist sock. Sticky necklace. Sticky necklace. Yeah. That works. I like that. I like that, that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I like sticky necklace. That's what all the lads in prison said about you. Loves a sticky necklace. Either. I loves a sticky necklace, that does. <laughs> mm. Clop, 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 clop. How many Kappa jackets do you own? Sixty-seven. How many Elise jumpers? One. I don't like them. I always had you down as a rich man. No, I had a Mizuno. Ah. Mizuno, and head. Oh, I I liked my tennis brands. I loved that. I loved having that triangular-shaped head bag for for all my, my school stuff. 
stuff that I, you know stuff that was uh, rectangular so i'd have to fold it awkwardly to get into my triangular shaped tennis head bag that was meant for carrying tennis rackets <laughs> I was going to say, they were quite the, quite the rage in the crazy neon colours. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, well, my, they don't, my... nowadays, they don't have bags. They just carry everything no. in their pockets. Well, nowadays, they just put everything in a removable hard drive, don't they, for school? Fucking ridiculous. That. Put the fags in there. Put the light here. Car Digital keys. pen. Mm. Your mum's address. Uh, 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 a troll top, pencil topper. You can buy all the facts, that's all online now. A ruler. Mm. Well, now rulers are just apps on your phone. Like, yeah. you, you take a, you take a picture of something you sh- and you say to your phone, how long is this? This is 34 centimetres. That sounds real. That actually <laughs> sounds real. <laughs> it would probably be impossible to do in real life because of you, you, like, you could never tell how far away the picture was taken from the thing. But yeah. I don't I don't know these computers they can tell you anything nowadays. They are clever like. They 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 told they told me that that like uh I look like a right dick wearing my coronavirus mask. I should I shouldn't wear it because it's turning me into a muslim. I was going to say you shouldn't wear the corona mask. Mm. You can have some mercury like injected into your eye if you wear them masks. <sighs> the last thing I want is Bill Gates coming round. On his motorcycle, on his 50cc motorcycle, driving d- down the d- down the like uh, the gravel path to me house. He hasn't done that for a while. He bangs on the door any time of day, any time of night. He bangs on that like, bang, 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 bang. Like no, he's uncouth. He's an uncouth character. He's, he's an absolute always... sod. Uh, like I-, I blame his parents, like Liam and Charlie Gates. They, 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 they were both on the dole the whole time. They were both like Liam was always down the down the pub trying to sell, like trying to sell meat that he'd, he'd stolen from supermarkets. But yeah, Bill would come round. He'd say, "Oi, oi!" Like uh, I, I've got a vaccine here. I made it in me in me bathtub at home. Like you're gonna take it, you're gonna take it, or I'm gonna kick off. And he'd he's say, he's oh. done that before. Yeah. He's done that before. He did it with DOS. Mm. I mean, uh, I was. I, I mean, I remember we were in Radio Rentals when we were a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. we were in Radio Rentals with my dad, and he was. He was. Mm. We've been right. We've been lending a, a VHS player, as you mm-hmm. do. That uh, as as it was in the time. Yeah. As it was then, you know, yeah. back in the day, VHS. Anyway. In comes Bill Gates. He's he, he was younger then, obviously, mm. and he just starts smashing everything up. Oh, my my dad's like, "Fuck you know what's going on here?" Uh, yeah. Shot man's on straight on scene. What's up, Bill? What's Hi. up? What's going on? And he says, mm-hmm. "You're buying this fucking DOS off me." And he was like, what the, "What the fuck is DOS?" And he says, "It doesn't matter what it is. You're having it." Mm. Starts fucking throwing fucking. Starts throwing hands on him. Oof. So my dad steps in and says, Hey, you pack it in, pack it in. He's like, yeah. He's buying this fucking DOS off me. And he's like, What the mm-hmm. fuck is DOS? And he's like, I don't I don't really know. I no. just, I've 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 put money on it and I've got to get rid of it. I put all my money on it and I've got to get rid yeah. of it. So he told him, Here, go down the auction. They'll have them off mm-hmm. you. Yeah. He didn't pay for the like, fucking uh, damage, did he? No, 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 he gets away with anything. Gets away with anything. No. I mean, the the second time I ever I ever met Bill Gates, I was in the uh, the orchards, but by, by by the back of the old, uh, you know, the closed down uh, clothing factory. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I was in the orchards there. It was night, and I was just walking home. I'd I'd been to my mate's house to watch uh, Keenan and Cal on Nickelodeon. Ah. Uh, I was walking back, and him and his, him and his mate, um, Steve Wozniak, who worked for Apple, they pull up oh, on I... the dirt bikes. Yeah. And uh, and he's got a fucking pen knife. What? Bill Gates has. He had a pen knife. You fucking what? Just, just a little thing. I don't like this. But, but, what, what's... It, Go on. And he, he pins me up against a tree, just one of the little trees that I'd had. 
like uh, not a full-on apple tree, more of a, a shrub or sapling, really. And he says to me, here, stop using your web browser you're going to use in an explorer. It comes with Windows 98, and you're going to fucking use it, mate. And I was terrified. I was, I was oh. shitting myself because I was only about nine years old. I fucking... I... I am gonna mm. fucking nail him when I see him now. Uh, That's fucking disgusting. To watch out though, he carries a pen knife. I don't give a shit. I'll go around like, with uh, a. I'll go around with a fucking hammer. He thinks he. He thinks he's everybody just because he's a billionaire. I don't care. I don't know. Just because he's got the biggest house on the estate, don't mean nothing to me. Cut the back of my hand, just to prove a point. He's a fucking dickhead swanning around in his fucking BMW D series. You can... I, I had to hide it from my mum so she wouldn't be worried. I'm gonna fucking. Then... I'm decking that cunt when I see him. Right. I'm decking him. And now he wants us all to have vaccines? And we know the kind of person he is, don't we? Well, I'm not having him off him. No. You get a fucking, you get a fucking backhander if he tell, comes near me. Tell I might you just go. I might go out and get polio just to spite him. Prick. Yeah. Best league. Yeah, he, he was trying just to trying to keep down, out but... of it. Just try to keep mm. out of it. Yeah, um, I take a different home, different route home from your mate's house now. See, it was all right when Steve Jobs was about because, like, he would fucking hassle him instead. Aye. Uh, fucking go well, round, then... piss mm. him, go pull on his turtleneck. Mm. Like, uh, I remember that fight dad in the in the uh, Harvester car park. Up, up near the motorway. Who was that with? No, no, Bill, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Oh. Talking about having that fight for like two weeks. Oh, before. they were fighting. Aye. Oh, I thought you meant you and he were fighting. No, I, I wouldn't fight with Bill Gates. He's mad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as he's not around when we go looking for them jobs again. Uh, yeah. uh, no, not when we're 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 going up the uh, going up the cul de sac to, to try that. and find some try and find some employment. I need that project management job. Mm. I need it. I need it now. Because the thing is, I don't want to fall into these fucking like shop pimps. Mm. Have you seen them? Oh no, I've yeah, seen them. The hang around the the hang around the flyover where everyone gets employed for retail work. With their mm. retail signs, mm. saw yeah. him hanging, saw him hanging around there. Mm. Nice, I mean, yeah, nice, nicer clothes than them. Yeah, so he does stand out a bit. Yeah, saying, saying that, come work at my shop. Oh, come work at my shop. I've got. Yeah, you can you can do all you can go on the tills all day long if you want. Mm. Sounds sounds too good to be true. So. I mean, I was I mean, I was just listening in, like, because yeah. I was just I was just, yeah. I was standing there with someone else, like, well, just listening mm. into it, and it was, it was fucking disgusting. I kept saying, mm. "You you look you look brilliant. You could scan anything you wanted. Mm-hmm. You could fill a yeah. shelf. Yeah, you could work. We could work behind, maybe work in the in the back of the shop." Well, this is the thing. I've seen, I've seen him before. He hangs around the front. Of, he hangs around the front of the shop. Yeah. And when they come out, he's like blah 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 round. I've heard he's having the wages as soon as he comes through the front door. Ooh. No, I, I hear it works that way. I tell you a story about when I was young and pretty naive. I was about seventeen, hmm. and I was coming back from my job as a prostitute. I had, I'd be out having sex with men and women, you know. And uh, oh, yeah. this fella, this fella gets on the bus, and he sits beside me because I'm on the bus. Yeah. Right. It was about twenty miles back to my house from the prostitute, uh, from the prostitute centre where I worked. That's shit. Hey, down now. The... Uh, no, man. It's shut down now. Couldn't get the fu- couldn't get the funding for it. Fucking Tories, that is. I don't know, man. I don't know how young young lads to get a start in life. I can't do a bit of prostitution for a few years. But anyway, go on, go on. This fella, this fella gets on the bus, like pristine, pristine suit, 
like beautiful, beautiful lake. It was purple, and it had like uh, darker purple tiger stripes on it. As this like uh, salmon, that's this yellow shirt and salmon pink tie. Did he have an eye patch? Uh, was he kind of gat? Could have been Sagat from Street Fighter. Yeah, it could well have been Sagat. Now that it I think sounds about like it. him. But in any case, go on, go on. It probably wasn't. He, he looks immaculate. I've never seen a fella this rich before. I think you know. As soon as he gets on the bus, I think, well, there's a big shot there. You know, he sits down beside me, and I think, oh, oh, I, I, like I was a bit flustered. I mean, I, I felt. Cause he's, uh, you know, as soon as he sat down, he says, "Oh, you're 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 a nice, strong, young-looking lad, aren't you?" And and I've never been complimented before in my life, you know, apart from by the clients and the prostitution. But I knew, yeah, I, but that's I, you know, normal. I was, I was that's wise, normal. I was wise to that. Yeah, that's what but, you know. You, is, that's part. That's part of the job. It's the perk. But this rich, powerful fellow sitting down next to me on the bus, and he starts complimenting me, and I'm like, "Well, oh, thank you. That's I was I was really flattered." That is. That's proper creepy. Yeah. That is. Start so asking for my number and stuff like that. Mm. Um, by this time, I was, I was starting to get suspicious, and I'd kind of twitched, and I was like, really, mate, just be honest, just be honest, what do you want from me? And he says, have you ever, have you ever wanted to make a bit of money labouring on building sites? He says, Fucking lad like you could make good money carrying a hot of bricks. On a fucking, yeah. was there people on in there? Pub, in public, were, were on the, was, within, was, it, was there other people on the bus? Yeah, there was. He was within ear, within ear shot of a family. That is of a f- It's fucking disgusting. That's going into all the all the fucking details. Tears. That's so fucking disgusting. Says to me, lad like you, big strong lad. You, you, could, you could you could even be a plasterer if you wanted. And I was, I was, I was young and naive, uh, but I knew I couldn't hit him. I didn't know how to stop him talking to me. Says all, all, all kind, all kinds of labouring jobs I've got. If you, you know, if I, if I fucking see him, I'm gonna fucking nail him. Mm. That's disgusting. In front of kids. Mm. In front of everyone. Lucky I don't. Lucky I haven't fucking seen him. It's bloody work pimps. That's what they are. Bloody work pimps. It's bad mm. enough with the doctor ones. Mm. Getting in the I mean, bloody way. You go up there. Yeah. I've, I've sliced my arm open again. And then you you're there trying to get fucking trying to get fixed up. Doctor's mm. got a black eye, but you don't say oh, yeah. anything. No, because you, you know what's you know what's happened. He's fucking there in the corner, hovering, messing mm. with something. I think it's a coin or something. I don't know. Yeah, it it really ruins it. And then you know, at the end of the day, that doctor's gonna have no cash. Yeah, that doctor's gonna have to turn over everything, and as they make it all legal and above board they say oh you gotta pay me for the stethoscope I provided you you gotta pay me for that fancy white coat you wear you know I mean but like you take these doctors to try and testify against against the doctor pimps and you know it's it's that they're afraid they've got kind of Stockholm syndrome they know that they'd they'd have never got you know they'd have never got into the doctor trade you know they were vulnerable they wanted to be good things They, they, they wanted to be simple you know, strippers or prostitutes or, you know. This is why like, I went they to, want to have a nice wholesome career. This is why before I went and got that that degree, whatever it was. Yeah. I, I will find out what it is one day. One day. One day. One day, we'll... one day I'll find out what that degree's in. What was I saying? Uh, oh, Dr. Yeah, Pim- yeah before, <laughs> before, 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 before I went in, I went into the sex mm. lines. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's normal. Every, oh, like your fucking dad and your dad and your uncle would be working in the sex lines. Yeah, but like uh, the whole the town that, that I lived in was built around the the sex mines. Of course, uh, it, it was about nineteen seventy five when the sex just well, it didn't run out. There was still plenty of sex down there. Like it, but the sex got too dirty to be currently viable. You know we. <laughs> we <laughs> We tried to export it to India and Germany, places where there's less stringent rules about how dirty the sex has to be. But they have they have their own supply, of course, and they're all subsidised by their own governments. 
So eventually yeah, it all shut down. When when we were doing it, it was a good rain, like proper dirty sex, like fucking pure oh, nice. filth. It was yeah. about a mile wide vein of it. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't on it long, mine, because I was only young and I wanted no. to just over the summer, like, but fuck me. Yeah. Like, money, hand over fist. Hmm. Just fuck it, you, you're pissing money at that time. No, you'd come up on the elevator, the foreman would be there, and he'd fill your, he'd fill your top pocket on your boiler suit with, uh, all, with like, seven... Like or fifteen, fifty pences, and that, that was, you know, you'd be set. You could you could buy um, an house with that many fifty p's. Men were walking, men were walking out of work, and still all black with the with the sex dust, hands and faces, walking straight into the the uh, bank, getting a mortgage on a house. You could do it back then, fifteen fifty p paces. Yeah. And working a sex mine, you were guaranteed an house. What do you mm. get nowadays? Nothing. You, you maybe get like 18 Freddos for that money. It's fucking... Like four Taz bars. Don't even have the regular sex industry. It's all gig economy no. now. Yeah. Every, uh, like most of the most of the people getting... And of course, like a lot of it's automated now, isn't it? So, mm. you know, they, they can synthesize. They can synthesize. I mean, it's much in the process. No one dies of sex long anymore. No one gets a vibration white finger from the vibrators we had to use. But, like, it's just not honest, it's, it, in my opinion. I don't know, because the thing is, like, you mm -hmm. ultimately you think of it like safety view, but then the culture's gone. Yeah. Like, yes, we shook our hands to pieces, shoving dildos in holes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we, we, we knew what the fucking result was. We did it anyway. You wouldn't have to work past 55. You'd be set. You'd have oh, yeah, a council house. You'd, I mean, uh, I'm only... I'm, I'd pay you a pension. I mean, really, I'm only talking to for the people who carried on in it because, well, yeah, they, yeah. they carried on for so long, obviously. We know what happened there, but... Mm. When I was in it, there was a fucking pride to it. There was. There was a fucking pride. You went in there... Your whole, your whole family had come down on Sunday. You literally... And there'd be... There'd be football matches between the other sex collieries. We would dig through the filth mm -hmm. and just roll around in it with piggish glee. <laughs> that was that was that was the, how we did it back in the day. Nowadays, uh, like, it's all. I remember the brass. All, I remember the brass all, band competitions they used to have. Uh, the rival sex mines that would would turn out their brass bands and march them down the main street. With their big banners depicting graphic sex acts, and then I remember they would, they'd also be accompanied by the the, the funk war guitar, because mm -hmm. they were, these brass bands were playing uh, like yeah, sexy it, jazz or sexy funk. Well, it was all the kind of you know you know in the Red Shoe Diaries when David Duchovny would imagine someone having sex, and uh, and that 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 uh, saxophone music would come on. That was all. That was all uh, traditional British sex colliery, uh, sex mine music. Sex mine music. Mm. They got Doesn't, some of the best uh, sex. I mean, I mean that, that's what a film brassed off is about. Because the thing possible. is, like a lot of people think, oh, it's from the seventies. No, it's much older now. No, much older now. No, it's like eighteen nineties. Eighteen nineties, yeah. Like a lot of it. A lot of it was written by uh, that American composer Philip Sousa. I mean, he's like bomb chicka wow 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 wow. I mean, he was there was a bit more to it than a bit more a bit longer. Yeah, the phrases. So, but, yeah. I mean, of course, sort of, back then, it, back then it was played on harpsichord rather than funk guitar. Funk guitar hadn't been invented at that point, no. but funk guitar hat was made for the sex collieries. Well, it was. It's a the harpsichord's a very difficult marching band instrument. Like it puts enormous strain on the player's back, whereas the funk guitar, much simpler, lighter piece of equipment. You just have to have a small boy carrying your your amplifier for you, and another small boy carrying a generator to power the amplifier. Well, that's what it is. Well, I suppose that's probably one of the reasons why it's not around anymore. You can't have kids mm. doing it. There's no. no kids, no kids aren't allowed in, in that sort of that's stuff. That's why kid, that's why kids are so behaved, so ill behaved these days, that they're, they're not forced to do heavy back breaking labour. For more, for hours until their their bodies break and they die young. 
Exactly. And that's why they're out on the streets sending Snapchat photos of men falling over to to each other. And vinegar. So they're out on the streets drinking pint after pint of vinegar so they throw up. <laughs> that sounds like what I used to do. <laughs> Just gulping down pints of hot vinegar. I do like vinegar. Like really. <laughs> I remember that you used to have your normal kettle in your house where you'd make a cup of tea. And you had your vinegar kettle, didn't you? Where you'd boil up a, a cup of vinegar for yourself and for, for piping, like, after work. Mm, <laughs> piping oh, hot vinegar. Piping hot you'd vinegar. Say, you say to me when I came round, yeah, you want malt vinegar or you want white vinegar? And I'd say, I'll, add, I'll just have a cup of coffee, please. And I'd say, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have white vinegar today, I think. Damn right, mate. I'm not having another coffee shite in my fucking house. It's fucking... Vi- I mean, it's bad enough you have the spirit. I'm yeah. telling you now. You're lucky I like it. Anyone else, I'd throw <laughs> them out of the fucking house if they weren't having the malt vinegar. Splash well, them I mean, sometimes I'd join you for some uh, some white vinegar as long as it came from a pickled egg. Like, uh, oh, that's different. Jar. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Because I, I like the sulfury, eggy aftertaste that it leaves. I didn't like the eggs themselves. We just, I mean, we just threw them again, it, again, again, piping up. Piping up, silver skin mm. onion though you gotta have cold. Yeah, that, that's never, the summertime never thing. Have that vinegar hot, never. No, it's, it's no, just. No, that, it'd be horrible. It'd be, put it'd some be like ice having... in it. Put some vinegar ice in it. Yeah, some frozen vinegar. Mm-hmm. Ooh, sounds uh, nice. lovely stuff. Ah, of course, made by wasps vinegar. Like honey is made by bee. Vinegar made by the wasp. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. They always say you can't attract a bee with vinegar because vinegar is made by a wasp. Exactly. That is the they're, saying. They're Asian enemies. I hate wasps. Ants I don't even... make Meccano. Hey? Ants make Meccano. You ever uh, break open an ant's nest, get a shovel? You see lots of little uh, Meccano uh, stuff in there? You know, Does like Meccano little, uh... still exist? I remember it wasn't very around um, when I was a kid. <laughs> so uh, I just don't think they're selling it commercially anymore. Oh yeah, I'm, I know ants true. still exist, but I was like, yeah. Meccano, I wasn't born mm-hmm. in the 50s, what are you on about? <laughs> <sighs> Alright, ants ants make Playmobil then. That's better. Some, yeah. I want something relevant and probably Scandinavian. Ants make Sylvan, Sylvanian families uh, uh, figurines. Sylvanian families look someone shitting. That's all it ever was. Look at yeah, one of them in was, the toilet. That's it. It was always it was always looking at us, looking at a, a, a young a young squirrel, trousers around the ankles, taking a shit in his in his toilet in an anthropomorphic fashion. Ooh, you've caught me that. again by ripping off the roof of my house. <laughs> oh, that happened to me in real life once. A, what a no. giant man ripped your roof off and store giant, stared at you. A giant pervert, six hundred foot high, like pervert, stalking West Yorkshire. <laughs> Lamps the police went to to bring him down, man. God thriller. <laughs> King Dong. <laughs> 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 I mean, he wasn't a contact offender, so it wasn't that bad. Oh. Like uh, <laughs> he was more of a voyeur, <laughs> but like uh, sounds more like a sex pest giant. Yep. Yeah. Like uh, he was, it, it, like it, it was just a normal sized sex pest at first, but he was uh, he was irradiated by Hartlepool nuclear power plant. Became oh. a gigantic, yeah. So he became a gigantic pervert. Colossal pervert. Absolutely immense sky blocking pervert. Yeah, that the uh, that movie, The Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman, mm-hmm. is based on the is based on the story, but of course they've changed the perversion role from the giant who is the pervert in real life to us, the audience, who are perving on this giant woman. Because That doesn't yeah. make see that makes no sense. 
know. Why would you perv on a giant one? What are you going to do? Climb up her? There's literally nothing you can do to impress her, is there? Apart Get on a clitoris squished. like it's a speed bag. Start yeah. giving good boxing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd literally have to climb in her and, and start that, punching the walls. <laughs> yeah. Start punching the walls. Do a flash dance in there. She probably wouldn't yeah. even fucking wink. No. Yeah, like like it'd be an it'd be like an annoyance to her. It'd it's be a an logistical annoying nightmare. Would you need a team? Yeah. yeah. Get a team in there. You need a, you, you basically need for a lie down on a motorway, build a specially shaped truck. I tell you what, yeah. get them sex miners work again. It would. If anyone knows how to do this, it'd be a team. You'd have to round up a team from from Derbyshire Darbysh or the Notting Nottinghamshire sex fields. And, uh, and set them to work on it. They'd know how to get a 50, 50 foot woman off. It's true. Oh. They'd have a barefoot and pregnant by the end of the week. Just like everything in Yorkshire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, Adam, I hear you like mm -hmm. riots. Riots are one of my favourite things. I like to incite riots. And then watch them through binoculars. Mm. So often, I'll I'll stand in a bank, and then I'll I'll just start shouting about like uh, how how uh, yeah, how fractional reserve banking works. And because most people don't necessarily understand fractional reserve banking, when you sh start shouting like Jimmy Stewart does in that film, uh, it's a wonderful riot. <laughs> <laughs> When Jimmy Stewart starts shouting about fractional reserve banking doesn't work and there's never enough money in the bank to pay everyone's loans off, everyone goes fucking mental. Like, uh, they, they start demanding their money back when really they already give it to the bank and the banks give it to someone else because that's what banks do. Fucking like, bankers. Uh, what you actually get in return for your money from a bank is a best friend's bracelet. That's the backing to our currency. Well, what about riot? Have you seen some of these riot-themed businesses mm. of late? I mean, oh, riot, yeah. riots are all the rage at the moment. Oh, no, there's a wonderful entrepreneurial spirit in the United States. Like, uh, I think my favourite one that I've seen so far is Black Lives Mattress. What? Like, uh, that's... It was a, this, it was say this that, fellow say, in Detroit. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Say that again. It's this fellow in Detroit started uh he's a black guy himself mm -hmm. like uh he had he owned a bedding warehouse outlet store basically yeah but he, with his entrepreneurial spirit he knew that as soon as george floyd's body was not even cold he changed the name of his business from the bedding warehouse or whatever it was called to black lives mattress like, uh, I don't know if that's offensive or really, 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 really good. I think it's top business in my opinion because he, he started running. He started running TV adverts straight away. Because most like, people who are alive like mm -hmm. mattresses, and black people, their lives matter, and the amount of sleep they get on a comfortable mattress matters too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. On public access television, say, "Come down, come on down to Black Lives Mattress." Like, uh, only here with our A-Care promise, all covers and blankets free. You know, and he, he, was, he was reusing the entire vocabulary of this important social movement in the United States. To sell you know, mattresses, all cup, all coppers are bastards. All covers and blankets free. You know, to sell mattresses because black, black, black lives mattress. Well, this is the thing. Like, yeah. when you when you think about it. Like your nor your normal your normal protesting sort of type, they're gonna mm -hmm. go. Yes, I need a mattress that's also ethical. There you yes. go. And then oh. for your racists and bigots, mm -hmm. they're too stupid and they'll just go in and buy the shit. Exactly. They'll think it's some kind they'll, of parody. They'll, they'll start think think, they'll, they'll start thinking mattress every time they turn on Fox News. They'll They'll think it's it's the idea of some kind of white person who lives in Europe, who who's who's just making a cheap pun on this important social movement. So so they'll want to buy the, they'll want to buy the mattresses too. Yeah, because they they they're hideous yeah. inside and shouldn't live. Exactly. It's entrepreneurial. 
it's 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 black excellence is what it is. It's like what Beyonce made that film about. Beyonce was right, and I don't even know what she said. <laughs> anyway, it's about I think it's time. Time. about that time again, Tom. About that time again, chaps. We can we can we can be off we can be off back to the back to the uh, the port cabin where we take our breaks have our saveloys some uh, some mushy peas and uh, it's knocking off time we'll get we'll get yeah. the we'll get the tram home so and, uh, it's, talk to you again on Sunday yeah. it's goodbye from me and it's uh, fuck off from me fuck off and no screaming at the end this time bye everybody bye.